Welcome YouTube, Hillbilly here today with Hillbilly Designs. Today I'm going to do a small tour of my leather workshop. It's not a lot, but it's what I have. Some time ago I'd had some injuries to my legs. I was really bored sitting here at the house, so I decided to take up this hobby of leather working. I've always been really inspired with it. Started watching a lot of the YouTube videos and I decided to go ahead and get into it. Well, anyways, I'm going to cover a few of the basic hand tools to start doing some small projects. And I'll also go through my setup that I have at my leather shop. Yeah, my little workshop. You see, I've got my lace on my little holder over there. Got a nice little cutting board I picked up at s and Plastics. It's a place that deals with plastics. Got it, I don't know, I think it was 24 maybe $28.00. It's pretty nice, about a half inch thick. It's like two foot by about 18 inches there. Use it for doing all my cutting, stamping, as far as uh, punching leather. I've got a marble countertop here, granite countertop. Picked it up at a place that actually does counter kitchen countertops. They had a bunch of remnants. I don't know what they got me. They got me probably about $14. No, maybe it was $10 a foot. Eh, it probably cost me about 30 or 40 dollars for that works out really nice it doesn't move very much you'll see that i've got some homemade hammers here they're malls actually i've took me um, some poly plastic cut me a bunch of uh, leather disc with a punch You'll see I've got myself a carriage bolt in the top, a couple pieces of aluminum in there to sandwich everything to make it look good, and then a acorn nut at the bottom. Sandwiched all of it, sanded it down, put a little stain on it, voila. Did that three different times as you can see. Yeah. Also made myself a little, you'll see I've got a little wooden holder here. Nothing more than a log. Oh. It's got the date and everything I made it. Yeah, sanded it out, used a little grinder, made it. Holds these really nice. Biggest problem we have with these is they rolled away. But anyways, got all my stamps over here for stamping and carving into leather. I, again, I made myself uh, cut up some logs. You'll see this is just all regular logs. I'd cut it in half and then had put the other ones there. A lot of drilling though. Took a little time there. Got some organizers. I picked these uh, machinist tool chest up from Harbor Freight. About 70, 80 bucks. Ah, of course I used a coupon. Got them a lot cheaper. They do a real good job at organizing all my tools as far as the leather tools and things. The needles and cutters and all sorts of good little tools. A lot of my tools I picked up on uh, candy leather. I've picked them up off of Amazon. I've picked them up off of eBay. A few older units. Got these, I believe, off of eBay. Did a little bidding for some of them. Some of the other necessary items. Some wax, beeswax. Something to sharpen some blades. Paint brushes, or actually brushes to do some dye work. Cool little drawer there to put my uh, swivel blades, swivel knives, some uh, dividers, uh, a bunch of miscellaneous, little gauge for thickness on uh, leather, scissors, other cutting devices, assortment of punches for punching leather, an oblong one for belt loops. Another assortment of uh, punches for punching holes. A little cheapy one there from Harbor Freight actually works really well. Again, these are actually uh, punches used for stitching. Another little miscellaneous thing. Anyways, we'll get started here. I also, I yeah, I think I showed you this. I made this clever little deal for... It's a uh, holder to put all my threads, 
A lot of them are waxed. I left the little covers on them just to keep the dust off the actual thread and stuff. Different threads that I might use. Here's some of the leather lace for lacing projects. Um, get an assortment of those in different sizes, eighth inch, three thirty seconds, things of that sort. Um, this here is really nice. I do all the cutting. Anyways, we'll get started. You want to turn around and pick yourself up a couple little blades. This has been a really good little blade for me. You can actually replace it. It's nothing more than a utility knife um, that folds. Here's a little knife I picked up a Tandy. It does a little bit better with intricate work getting into a little areas. You're going to need that to do the, cut your leather. Then whenever you're yeah, let's see, look, putting rivets and stuff in, again, you're going to need yourself a small little assortment of different punches. I chose to buy some that are actually individuals. You can get them in a, in a set that has interchangeable bits that you can use. You're going to want yourself a little hammer, a maul. This is a rawhide one. Uh, Tandy Leather, again, has this. You can also pick this up Amazon or eBay and multiple other leather shops. Um, when you do some lacing or leather or sewing and stuff like buck stitching and stuff you'll want yourself a little stitching wheel. This actually as you push it into the leather it makes these little marks indentations in here. This clever little tool actually comes with about three or maybe four different wheels like five stitches an inch, six stitches an inch, maybe seven, eight I don't remember. Then you can also get these punches. These punches here, they come in different sizes. You'll see that, you know, the, they're diamond punches. These, after I use the stitching wheel, I take these and I'll hammer them into the lace and actually follow through on the large areas of the, the leather. Uh, then I'm going to stitch and these will poke the holes clear through. You can hammer them on. Now, providing that you don't have some really thick leather they can be tough on some thicker leather 10 12 in or get weight 10 or 12, 12 ounce weight makes it really difficult but a single punch is really good for around real tight corners or in areas to put your individual ones this is also good for around corners but again the larger one some of these come in six prongs and four prongs five prongs these make it really nice to put your holes in leather down the long line again the show everybody's gonna need Tandy puts out this little thing it's kind of a, a gray silver sharpie so to speak but the ink from this or the marking stuff from this actually wipes off of a lot of hides I've not had any hides yet that it wouldn't mark off that wouldn't wipe off you'll see I've got a little organizer over here Whenever I do get into stamping, I'll put my stamps in here. I've got a lot of other stuff in there now. Clever little knife my brother had made me. I uh, made it out of a piece of wood that he had there. He hand carved it. But anyways, this one is pretty clever. I can put a little uh, Chicago screws, other pieces, rivets, um, just all sorts of little fixtures that I use to mount leather together, rivets and things. Um, on over here, you're, it's going to be really a good thing if you got yourself a little set of dividers. It's really good for creating, you know, um, uh, circles, the ends of your leather. You can also make lines to follow with uh, your leather stamps and things of that sort. But it's a, definitely a must. Here's a stitch groover. Uh, I picked this one up at Tandy also. It's actually a fairly good one. This, the centerpiece, as you'll see, actually has the groove in it, the hole. That actually does a groove. This will follow the edge of the leather. I'll follow up with all these and I'll show you actually how to use all these and other videos to follow this one. I'll make a series of leather videos. This one here is actually, it's a number two beveler really used for cleaning up the edges, the sharp edges off of the leather. Round them off, make them look a lot nicer. 
you'll want yourself a pair of pliers. When you get into stitching, like buck stitching, sometimes you're running leather through some uh, pretty thick, or you're running needles through pretty thick leather. And this makes it to where you can grab a hold of the, the needle pretty quick. It doesn't have to be a bent nose, but I do recommend that it's a pair of pliers that doesn't have the charades in here, that's smooth. That way it doesn't tear up your needles. If it tears up your needles and you start running that through your leather, it'll tear your leather up. Of course, I picked this up. This is an awl. It's a, uh, I can get several different diamond tips or the diamond blades, all blades for it. You can get a curved one. You can get uh, just a straight scribe and then a couple different size. These are actually got a diamond shape to them. And you can sharpen these. These are so that you can grab a hold of it and poke it through several pieces of leather. Use this quite a bit. I've actually made a few little notches in my wood here uh, for the way that I actually hold it. And it gives me a lot better grip for it, with it. Again, you'll need to pick up some needles for stitching. These are harness needles. The tips are actually not sharp. They're, um, they're kind of blunt. I don't know if you can see in a video. And then they've got a typical eye. Let me put one of them down here. They've got a typical needle eye in the top. And you'll thread your lace, your waxed uh, thread through here. And you'll use these to do your stitching. There's several different stitches. Buck stitching being the first or the most common. There's other types of stitching too. Later we'll do some tutorials on this here. But you'll want to get yourself a little package. Now these do come in different sizes. This is a large one. I did it for basically video purposes. These are actually thick. These are really large. They make these much, much smaller. And again, these are not sharp. They do have some that are sharp. Here, clever little tool. It's for um, burnishing the edges of leather. Yeah, you'll put a little water on them. You'll put a little uh, leather stuff on them. You'll paint the edges, edge coating, and you'll use this and rub it back and forth. And it gives you a nice smooth and more of a professional look on the edges of your, your leather. You can also do the holes, larger holes with this side if you choose to. And of course there's different grooves for different sizes of the weights of leather. When you get further into it and you start actually venturing on to putting some really cool designs in them, you'll start with um, a swivel knife. Swivel knife being just like it says. This finger area, the bed that you use, swivels really nice. This is a craft tool by Tandy Leather. It's their professional series. And then the blade itself is actually a... Um, it's a just a smaller angle blade and you'll hold this kind of like I am right here and you'll swivel the bottom here and you'll put some weight you'll cut the designs that you've actually put in your leather with these um, there's another one this is an older one that I picked up off of eBay it's an old Al Stolman it's really pretty um, kind of good looking it's got some rubies and stuff in it uh, some of these are getting to the point where you can't get a hold of them, but if you do, you don't mind spending the money on some of them because they'll cost you a handful of money. Um, but this is a really, I, I really like this one for cutting larger cuts. It's got a hollow ground, uh, about a 3 8 blade on it, and again, the um, top swivels really nice. Then you're going to want some stamps. There's, um, man, there's hundreds of these things. And again, you can find all these on eBay. You can find them on eBay. You can find them on Amazon. And there's just a load of sites out there. There's um, a bunch of them. Some are for Sheraton-type uh, designs. Some are for just basic designs. Uh, you might actually start doing some of your own. But they do have numbers on them. And it'll actually let you know. These here are bevelers. And you'll see that they're kind of different sizes and stuff. I picked these ones up also at Tandy. 
That's a pear shader, another one that's pretty commonly used. There's some, there's a couple of them that are actually background. Um, you'll do some backgrounding. They got different designs on them, and you'll put this backgrounding in between some of your designs, and it just gives it the highlight. Whole purpose of cutting, you put a design on a leather, and then you cut it with your swivel knives. Um, after cutting it with a swivel knife, you're using your stamps to actually create like a 2D effect on all of it. Anyways, that'll be it. Um, it Again, organizing yourself a little bit with areas to put your lace. Some good lighting above. I have a lot of my supplies up above. And then a good little area to organize your tools of your choice. And then your stamps and hammers. Well, I hope everybody's enjoyed that today. Small little tour of my leather workshop. Uh, if you have any questions or any kind of comments, of course, put them in the comments. Um, if you like the video, stay tuned. Because here in the future, I'll do a lot of other tutorials on all the different tools that I kind of went through and some more. I'll do tutorials on how to use each and every one of them on some scrap leather. And eventually, hopefully, we'll see you doing some videos.